Well, hello people on YouTube, this is Anger 74 and I want to do this video to help you out with winning gunfights and playing this game more logically. So, this is my fastest double swarm, I think it's uh, 2 minutes and so seconds, um, uh, for, from the first kill to the second swarm. But that situation right there, right off the very beginning, right off the very beginning, I let the guy run by because I know that in, in the amount of time I had to kill him, I wouldn't be able to do it. So he didn't. He, I I I knew that he wasn't looking my direction, so he wasn't there. But then I selected the guy that I thought was posing me the biggest threat, and then I chose to kill him. That that allowed me to survive, and then bunch into this little area. This little area kind of um it cuts off the spawn. Any any area that cuts off the spawn where and here I I was like doing something. I was, I think I died in that spot. Uh, late in the gameplay, and that was because I was like uh, doing something on my controller. Uh, but anyways, whatever, um, that, that one thing that just happened, it shows that, um, I selected the right person that was the most threat to me, and I went after him, and then I moved into the area that would cut off the spawn that was very possible, because my team was far away from there, and I knew that spawn existed, and right here, again, I waited for the right time to get into that gunfight. Here, I make a really bad decision, because I know this guy's taking out the UAV, and I know he's going to run out, but I decided to go after him anyways. And this is when he just teleports by me and hits me with that shotgun. Um, something like that is, uh, I don't suggest. When you see a guy standing behind cover, taking, taking out the UAV, don't go after him because chances are he will have shot it and pulls out his gun. And even though he doesn't expect you, you know where he is, but you don't expect him to pop around the corner. So just wait. Also, what I'm doing right now is I'm going for the tag. Uh, I'm combining two actions simultaneously. So I'm going in the objective. I'm confirming that tag, but I'm also running away from a gunfight that I can't win, and that's a very big suggestion right there. I start shooting him, but I see that my teammate goes up and chases the guy, and so my teammates have the upper hand to win that gunfight, and I also have the upper hand in getting those 25 or 50 points for the assist. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm EMP, but I'm predicting where they're going to be spawning. So they're going to be spawning. So um, I actually was moving over here before, and right here I just lost because I didn't know there was two guys, and I didn't know one of them had an RPG, and I didn't know one of them had a foul. So that's the reason I lost that gunfight. But I know I'm going to head back right to where I just lo I just died because I know the enemy has moved on. I do I really don't know what happened there, um, but so something happened with that gunfight. Uh, but I keep on heading to the same spot because it's skill confirmed. This is an objective game. You don't go for the objective as a location on the map. You want to go back to the place where you just died because you know the guy's going to be there. So that's what I'm doing. Kill confirmed is the gameplay I play more than anything. Now, that shock charge means that there's a guy either in that tunnel, but because I got shock charged, he might know that I'm there. So I'd rather avoid that gunfight. That's very possible. And he has an advantage because I'm, I'm moving slowly and I'm already damaged because of the shock charge. So I'm getting out of there. And right here, I'm using the, I'm using my teammates for help. This guy, uh, I don't know where he came out of. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing in this gameplay. I wasn't doing very good at the beginning. I was winning these tactical gunfight things. Uh, but closer to the end, um, in the last seconds, I ended up pulling off like a 2 minute and 19 seconds, I think it was. A double swarm. It was very fast. And so right there, I'm running away, and I'm not turning around because I see teammates. I'm always looking at the minimap. I know, always know where my teammates are. I don't even need to know where the enemies are. I don't need a certain UAV to be able to know where enemies are because I can tell by the... I, I can judge by the kill feed. thing is, if, if your teammates are on one side of the map bunched up together and there's nothing happening in the kill feed, you know that the empty space, there's for sure going to be an enemy there because there's empty space and there's no... Uh, right here, I do a stupid move where I where I go in, and there's a group of them. Um, but yeah, but if there's a large group of teammates together, and there's a lot of things happening in the kill feed, that's when you know you should be heading towards your teammates because there's people spawning there. And mo the way the spawn system works, it is, it doesn't spawn you directly across the map from where all the action is. It, it's so to keep the action going. So they they were they will not be spawning across the map from where we just were. Instead, and uh, one of our teammates spawned uh, closer across the map, so that now the the enemies that ran into the middle are kind of surrounded by us. But at the same time, we're not because we're spawning in thirds. We're dividing up into three, and there's three kind of spawns. So and it keeps it moving in a circle. So once again, I'm trying to avoid the gunfight. I can't win, and I'm trying to play it out with the enemies and the position of my friends. 
here. I didn't know the guy was there, but I looked at the minimap and I used my sound to re to figure out where that guy was. I'm avoiding that red dot, but I know the teammates are going to take care of him. And now this is the part where um, I start going on that nice streak and I get the um, and I get my first swarm. Uh, and this is because I'm moving around. I'm not going dead through the middle, but I know where I'm going. I know where my I know where my goal is. Uh, I know where their spawn is, but I'm not going to take the most direct route there because that's where they expect you to go. So, uh, something else I just did before, it might not be noticeable, um, but for kill confirmed, tags are the most important thing. So to get those extra few points, um, you might want to let a teammate try to see if he can win that gunfight, and if he loses, you can get those extra 25 points for denying his tag. I'm not saying you should be doing this where you should see if your teammate dies, but sometimes it's better to see if he's going to go for that gunfight because he he deserves to win it more than I did. Right here there's a camper and I, and I nearly died while I was sitting in this area. And right now I'm going to call on the V-Sai and now because I know where they're spawning and I know where their location is, now this is the time where I can really just pre-fire them around corners. And they have no chance of killing me. And yeah, this is when my first swarm drops in. Um, and right here, I'm not taking the direct route. I'm taking a route that involves giving me height advantage. The thing is, shooting up, when you shoot up, you're looking up, but you're all, the only thing that's there is your target. Uh, that's it. And your gun, when you're looking up, is blocking all of your view at your level. So if you're above somebody, it's a lot easier because you're looking down and you can see a larger range of where people can be. Because most of the time, people are on ground level. So looking down from those boxes is a much bigger advantage. They expect you to come down on ground level, but they don't expect you to be above them. So predict the position of enemies right there. I knew I probably wouldn't have won that gunfight because he's camping, but I let his own bouncing betty kill him. So at least there, I would avoid death. And avoiding death is more important than trying to get that kill and risking it. I knew for a fact that I would live if I, if I let that happen. And because of this, I end up getting my sentry gun and getting that my streaks. Now, there's another camper, a luckiness situation. But he's a camper, so he deserved to die there. And, um, yeah, so right there, I, the, the only reason I started shooting him is because I knew I had enough time to kill him. And I was playing it out strategically. Now, with my VSAT again, I have the pre-fire abilities on the enemy, so I'll be more aggressive than before. And also, another tip, when you put down something like a sentry gun, you know enemies are going to... When you have something like a sentry gun or a care package or a guardian or some equipment on the map, you're going to want to hang around it because it's going to be like placing an objective in a non-objective game mode. Enemies are going to move towards it to try and take it out, but you can use it as a distraction for them. You will distract them from taking that gunfight. Uh, and instead, you'll have an advantage because they're not ready for the gunfight because they're, they're too busy trying to take out that equipment. So hang around your equipment because enemies will be trying to take it out and they won't be paying as much attention to you. Obviously, they know you're there, but they don't know that you'll be coming around the corner and while they're trying to destroy the equipment. So that was it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. See you guys later and goodbye. I'm off to France. See you later. Bye.